Huh. You know, having having a an a goal, having an end, not a goal. Goals can be achieved and then surpassed. We're always capable of more than we believe. I'm talking about your mortality. Your when you on your last day, what where do you want to be? And what do you want to stand for? What what do you want your state of information to be on your last day? It's a balance. So the universe makes sentience, which is the only thing of value in the universe, and really the only reason for the universe to exist. Everything else is beyond my comprehension. I know that. I can contemplate it, but I understand how far short I'll fall. You see, mine is to help those people, the ones who fear death because they've been, they went through the religious gig, they went through the meditation gig, whatever it is that they, in their search for God, they couldn't find God. And I can tell you right now, like my mother told me, what you're looking for does not exist here. After my near-death experience, for years, I know it was at least five years, all I could think about was, of course, of course that's why, because they told me the meaning of life. The big why do we exist? I mean, is there any more, is there any more important question than that? I don't think so. <laughs> I was kind of I was kind of embarrassed because I one of my questions one of my questions when I was there was will I be rich and I remember the emotional turmoil that I placed these beings through it was sad I knew I knew that I knew I was going back for a reason I didn't know what that reason was, and I didn't know why it was so important, okay? And it was all just kind of uh, almost like normal. I don't know how to explain it, but it was like, th this is, this is, there is nothing better than this kind of feeling. And I was wrong because when they showed me God, I knew that this was nothing. Where I was was nothing. And I always tell people it was a near-death experience. I didn't die. And where I was, they told me I could stay for as long as I wanted. But then, you know, I couldn't have that. And whatever that is for who, whoever ends up there. Because there, many people have the near-death experience, okay? Some of them, most of them are profoundly changed. Me being a kid, I didn't have the wisdom to change the way an adult does. I was just shocked that I was given this information and it was so heavy that I made my mom take me to every church there was, every religion there was. And she finally told me one day, Laren, what you're looking for doesn't exist here. Because I scared the shit out of her for a long time, but I knew things I shouldn't have known when I told her that I, that, that I remember uh, breastfeeding and that I didn't like it, she tripped out. I remember discovering my hands. You see, it's because I saw my life from birth to when I drowned, and it was all there. Just like the second half, I saw the first half. That's why I have all these memories of discovering my hands and hitting myself and going, fuck, <laughs> literally going, fuck. What are these things? You know what I mean? I remember that clearly. Because I caught little slices 
out, okay? And I also got slices from when I went back until this point in my life. And that's, that's my goal is to tell people when I got to that why I understood I finally caved into where my life had taken me, all the, de the bad decisions as well as the good, and how I ended up there on that bridge certifying 100%, okay, this is when you're, you know, this is, <laughs> this is the moment. Um, when it passed, I knew something had changed. I knew it. I knew it deep down. And it was weird when I got home, I told the old lady about it because she knew all about my near-death experience. I had told her and I said, I didn't know there was a bridge there. She goes, oh, I never thought to mention it. This, not my old lady, she was just a, a girlfriend at the time. But I tell everybody about my near-death experience because I think it's important for people to, to hear it. My end goal, my end goal always has been, and I knew it always would be, have to do with those other people. But the, this, there was no bridge that existed. You see, the old bridge was still there. The new bridge is, was where I had the, 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 the vision of my car and all of that, okay? But the people that I was supposed to reach were on the old bridge. This bridge was different. And when I got home, I knew that it was this bridge. That's why I have so many different channels. I kind of got, for a while, I thought, you know, I'm, I, on Gamers Getting Played, it started out, I still had a gamer hangover from Laren Bomberian. Then I realized, no, you know, I don't, I don't, this isn't what I'm supposed to be doing. And f for 15 years, mainly, I, I did my near-death experience and what I do normally, just talk about shit in my life every day, you know, a clogged drain, whatever, just just to be normal so people understand who I am so they can go, yeah, I, that, what this guy is saying is true because I've watched him for 15 years and nothing has changed. He's the same old fucking guy. <laughs> and if he was reading from a script or making shit up, even at that point, he couldn't be as accurate. But that's what the truth does for you. This, is, this was the bridge. I realized it. And it's not, I mean, I consider it a giant responsibility, but the problem is, is I don't know when it's over. When, when have I reached that last person I was supposed to talk to? My goal is to tell that person that you're right. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. God does not exist here. He's not in your church. He's not in your religious neighbor. He's not in everything that happens every single day. He's not. We, you know, we, we need that, I guess, but he's somewhere where your, your mind can't even, comp your mind cannot comprehend that existence. No more than I could when I, when I ended up dead, drowned for well over six minutes, and I mean, well over, but it seemed like, you know, it didn't, I don't, time didn't relate the same way. I could have been there for hours, could have been there for days, could have been there for seconds. I, 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 I can't say. What I can say is that it was only love and understanding. There wasn't any forgiveness because there wasn't anything to forgive. It was just love and understanding and acceptance and every question had an immediate answer. And not just an answer, but the real answer. Okay, not something you read in a book, but some solid basic piece of information that is known to exist, period. And that can come from any sentient being that has ever existed in the universe. That's why your personal experience is so important, why your personal existence is so important. Because when we go to God, every sentient being there can live the life of every other sentient being. We don't even, I mean, we don't have a number for how many sentient beings that is. And maybe that's just, 
Maybe what I saw was just one universe worth of sentience. Maybe like Sir Roger Penrose says, it's, it's this rebounding, continuing machine that just restarts itself constantly, and God is just constantly having these sentient beings created. Now, I have to tell you, I had a thought one day that I had done all of this before, and that that's why they wouldn't show me before birth. Laren before, Laren during, Laren after. They would not show me that. That was, that was off limits. And that is, where, that is where this reality is created. So I, I don't know. It's, again, beyond me. My point is to tell you that to fear death is natural. That your natural, physical, chemical, electrochemical body terrorizing you, telling you to fear death. Okay? And it's not real. No more real than this, you know, that everything is space. I mean, all the, this quantum existence we're in is, is, is the reason for that is what I was told. And now my job is to tell you that there is something afterwards. And it's way better than this. It's just different. The only thing I can tell you is it's love, acceptance, knowledge, just nothing but good. There is no evil there. All... All of the ugliness of your information that was bad is cleaned. I don't know what the process is, but I know that's what it was. That you have to be cleaned of this. You have to com be completely clean of this before you can go and be with God. And I guess that's what this process is. We did it. We already lived it. We created it. The whole universe maybe existed before. And now here we are living it out to become quantum beings. I don't know. I know, but this step is important. They told me why. And I spent five years as a kid going, of course, of course, that's why, of course, that's why. Don't worry, God doesn't exist here and you don't have to feel bad about it because God exists. He just is not a creation of man. You can no more understand God than an amoeba can understand a human being. Even a hundred times that, okay? That's only one billion years of existence, not trillions or whatever it might possibly be, okay? Yeah, God exists, and he's all good, and, but he's not anything human. He's not the vicious, jealous, you know what I mean? All religions are it's my way or the highway, and that is the most evil of evil in God's eyes. period. That's it. The, God looks on human religion with disdain. Okay. Uh, and maybe this is why we're here is to prove just how bad it is. I don't know. It's be, that's beyond my pay grade. But I've seen what religion does. I've seen the, the, it's the most evil of evil. It's the, it's the most, uh, you know, prescribed reason for committing the most horrible deeds. In the name of God, God wants us to do this. God, 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 they're all yelling that as they commit murders and atrocities and horrors. Lies, cheating, stealing, thieving, dishonest, you know, all of the baser human instincts. No. We can't comprehend what is next, and that's, there's a good reason for that. And that's another thing I was told, was why it had to be like this. Not just, not just, not just the reason why this, but what's the end result? <laughs> is, this, is this something that you, we have to do? And they told me, and basically it was, of course. And then I asked them the meaning of existence. Well, why do we, why does God want us to exist? Because they, they, they exuded, they, 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 you, they, you, they exuded the fact that they worshiped God. I was not, not, not under one tiny little microsecond that I think these beings were God. 
Not for an instant did I think they were God. Never came, the thought never came into my mind, as a matter of fact, that these were gods or angels. All I knew is they were big, they were loving, they were just full of love and ex- understanding and acceptance. But when they showed me God, there was no doubt in my mind that was God. So there was no religion there. You see, you when you when you when this happens to you, you you tend to see whatever it is that helps you, you know, cope. The instinct for survival is very vicious. The instinct of, for survival is vicious. It's the most, probably the most driving instinct, more so than sex or, or, or food or adventure or play. Uh, it's, yeah, you, there's no overcoming it. And, and I don't think anyone is, not a liar, is capable of ignoring it and going, well, I'm not afraid of death. You see, I'm always afraid of how. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to die peacefully in my sleep. Not the poor sucker that gets sucked into a piece of farming equipment, you know? But we all go to the same place. Why? The big why? You know, I try not to think about that. I try not to even ask. I try not to even remember because I think that traumatic experience really harmed me. I've said this before. I thought it harmed me as a child to carry that burden and then spend the first 30 years watching things happen as I'm in total denial, trying to prove that what happened to me was a biomechanical fucking incident, you know, from anything from lack of oxygen to electromagnetic stimulation, you know, uh, molecules we don't understand that might be released during trauma, whatever the fuck it was, I tried it. It's not the same. The end goal for me is to tell a certain number of people exactly what I'm saying, that look towards quantum mechanics. Look, if you want, if you start studying the microtubule system with Hameroff and Penrose's ideas, you will start to understand that we're, we're just, we're a quantum machine. And the only thing permanent about us is the information we create in time space. We're locked to that. We own that space. That is us and we are it. And again, why suicide's not allowed, because sooner or later you will, if it takes a billion times, you will do maybe what I did, which was, okay, someone's going someone's gonna to come into my life or some event's going to happen to help me make a different choice, become a different person. That's why everyone is important. Everyone has a, a, a role to play, no matter how trivial And God does exist. He's just not this ugly God of man so you can relax, okay? God's not anything like that. You know, yeah, that's, you know, he's not going to burn you in a lake of fire because he loves you. Don't, don't worry. That's all, that's man trying to scare man simply to control man. But God does exist. It is the goal. I, I gave up all knowledge and all love and all happiness and all understanding and all acceptance, I gave it all up because it was nothing compared to being with God, okay? And again, don't fear that your instinct for survival, because everyone does.